Hey folks, I'm here. I just wanted to talk about a few bits and bobs around detail and then having a look at one of the bigger subnets that you may have not heard me talk about much before. Let's let's look at this tau.app, have a little look over here and you can see that the, the market cap of all alpha is growing um, and that's despite you know some of the subnets being you know crashing now uh, i think a vast majority of that is because of the dilution within alpha remember there's a huge amount of alpha being issued every single day across all of the subnets and and market cap is price time circulating supply um so we've had a bit of a, a, a tau dump today because of bitcoin uh, bitcoin has literally just brought everything down eth then moved with it and then Therefore, Tau has also uh, followed suit. So this was a lot higher the other day by about two hundred odd million dollars. But um, yeah, but it, it's still promising. And then when we're looking at um, the metrics, I've zoomed out to the first of April because that so it capsulates the top of the summer subnets. And we've just been in this <laughs> detailed bear market. And you can see basically um, a, a, an easy way to understand this green line is the amount of in, injection going. You know. Di let's call it dilution uh, and the purple is the 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 user activity you know us holders you know are we are we buying up more alpha than that's being injected and the answer is no and you and you can see this from a percentage deviation uh, perspective but one of the things i am looking for is this this purple line starting to angle and converge back uh, towards this green line and, and like with most things we'll most likely overshoot um, but it's still promising. I, I still think detail works. It's got lots of uh, things to iron out. Um, but you can see the the, the towel that's leaving root is is constant. It's it's lovely, and the and the percentage of towel going into the subnets is rising. So this again is 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 lovely. So everything is working there. Um, and one of the things that I've asked for months now, which seems to have, not because of me, but others have also thought the same, is. Um, Deregs, and there was talk of increasing the cap to say one four eight, yada yada yada. But I'm I'm really pleased that deregs are coming, and tomorrow the twenty third, um, the first dereg should happen. So, uh, if we just jump over to tau stats, and if we just go on any old subnet, so let's use shoots as top of the board. If you go to statistics and then scroll down, you'll see this ADR. So this alpha distribution ratio. And the way to understand, ooh, this looks weird. Huh. Um, it's, it's, not, it, it's not a good metric in my opinion. It's, it's a rough rule of thumb. Because what they're trying to do is trying to find um, some clear cut ways for subnets to be deregistered. So it's not a bunch of validators going, ooh, let's cut this one. Uh, and so they, they've got a bunch of filters. So you're going to be deregistered as a subnet if you're out of immunity, so it's four, four months. Your ADR, your alpha distribution ratio is under one. And in this case, it is, which is surprising. Um, <clears throat> and then the lowest price. So shoots is, <laughs> I don't think will be deregistered for a long, long, long time. Um, and, the, and the ADR is basically trying to show how much value is in the pool compared to in the alpha holders obviously converted to tau um and yeah I, I think it's just because shoots has been a, in a bit of a bear market but it's not at any risk it's good it's great but on tau.app you can see the dereg thing here and it's and it shows you top five subnets at risk so we've got 100 101 110 71 and 86 so um i'm surprised at core is I, i've been <laughs> Let's look at Cora. I thought it was above um, one ADR. I mean, it is it's dog shit. Yeah, it's at risk. It, it is above one ADR. So technically, it's not at risk. Um, so, and yeah. But hopefully tomorrow we see one of these get absolutely dumped, which is great. So, um, let's get out of that. Let's look at subnets. So the one I want to talk about, you can probably see, <laughs> is subnet 51 from, from the tab. It's been up here for a long time. Um, I'm old, so I still call it Celium, but it's Liam. <laughs> um, and it has done very well. Like it, It's always been high on the emissions. And for those that don't know what it does, it's GPU rental. Um, 
So if you want to really get under the, the, the bonnet, just go to subnetalpha.ai and then scroll down to subnet 51. And this is where I really get under the bonnet with uh, subnets. Uh, and then you, all the links are there, the normal stats. And then, you know, what exactly does it do? Um, and it's a pretty easy subnet to understand, really, because um, spare GPU um, that is not being utilized around the world is connected to the, the Liam network, and people can then just rent GPUs, just like Vast or CoreWeave. Um, and it's, it's really cheap, if not the cheapest out there. Um, and so it's done pretty well. So if you go to the, the Liam website, you can see what's on offer. And it's some hard, it's, it's some chunky rigs. You know, a, a lot of GPU subnets um, or GPU rental subnets, they have a whole bunch of, you know, RTX 3090s and whatnot, but we've got some proper kit here. Um, this is big boy shit. Uh, and then when you go to their dashboard, so it's a, a Grafana Liam one, you can see how many GPUs are, are, are online. You can see the different types that is being used. But more importantly, if we zoom out, let's say 30-ish days, because that's really when it started monetizing it. No, maybe a bit further. Let's do 40 days, minus 40. There we go. So this is what we are, I think everyone's interested in, Cilium Revenue. Um, so it started, 21st of August and this shows you revenue per hour <laughs> not per day or per month per hour 24 7 um, and obviously it's ebbing and flowing but I mean if you look at this it's it's averaging really around sort of let, let's just call it six hundred and eighty dollars so if we just get our little calculator out 680 times the price of uh, town about 350 oh sorry not town so it's 680 it's, per hour, sorry, per day, that's per day, and then the average month, month is 30.42 days. So already, it's making about half a million dollars per month um, in real world revenue. Now, um, I'm not entirely sure how they do their burning because with, with most subnets, you can go down, you go find it on town stats, look at the minor emissions, and then work out the, the, the minor sell side. And it's the miners which are the main sort of sellers of all subnets, pretty much. But they do burns, um, so it's not as clear cut. But I'm pretty sure this is the, the, the highest revenue ge generating subnet there is at the moment. And it's, it's interesting because the, there's a lot of different ways that you can think about tokenomics here. So if we just get a, an empty thingy, because um, at the moment, when you sort of mentalize, mentalize, is it even a word? The seesaw is quite skewed because you have the miners over here, which are super heavy. They get the sell, you know, they, they, they get the emissions and they have to sell because, you know, they have electricity costs, yada, yada, yada. And then what the hope is for a lot of subnets is that revenue goes up and therefore the seesaw balances. And the, and the point that real world revenue offsets all minor emissions, this is like one of the mini goals. So I think from a subnet owner's perspective, or not I think, I know, I know from chatting with many, is that you know most have OPEX, so operational expense, uh, expenses or, um, or expenditures. So that you know, salaries and rent and all that sort of stuff. And so they, they'd like real world revenue to at least match or exceed OPEX. Um, so Celium have done that here. And then minor emissions, let's just call it ME. Uh, and no one has done this yet, but I think Celium is probably the closest uh, to, to doing so, which is amazing. Now, how are you then can continue deriving value back to, or back through Alpha, um, that's open, well, there, there's no correct answer. We know that Ridges has gone down the sort of the pseudo equity route, um, but from what I gather with Celium, they want to run this experiment and and I'm really pleased that someone's, re you know, doing this. So Fish um, wants to basically burn all revenue. And and the reason why this is a great experiment is because this hasn't been done before, um, because detail has never existed before. But let's just say, you know, minor emissions are, I don't know, let's just 
pluck, it, pluck a number. Um, let's say it's five million a month. Five million per month. And let's just say revenue is also five million a month. Now, absent of any other vectors like market participants, etc., the you know the the price of this alpha should remain flat. But let's just say revenue continues going up because it's growing, and let's just say it has unlimited, okay? As in the revenue is so much that, you know, it's so much more than what the minor emissions will ever be. You know, so, you know, th this could blow up and let's say they're doing 100 million per month in revenue. Well, let's say they were always, like Fish was always going to um, burn an equal amount of minor emissions and let's say validator emissions, etc., and a little, a little bit more. Mathematically, technically speaking, that means alpha should or this alpha should always go up like to infinity by in theory in, in practice we don't really know what happens um, but you know with a bit of digging you can pretty much figure out who what is the average sell side pressure for a particular subnet every month when you add in the average sell side for uh, alpha holders validators the subnet owner the you know, miners you know so let's say it is 5 million well, as long as you're matching this or exceeding it and, you, and you're burning, let's say, six million alpha, uh, dollars worth of alpha per month, then there's nothing. I, I, yeah, I, it, it's going to be fascinating because technically alpha should go up forever. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I, I'd very much like to see this. So, fish, keep on trucking. Um, so that's that. Um, yeah, I, I guess the other thing is that there's no gatekeepers. So there's no KYC, um, you know, anyone can rent or supply GPU power, um, permissionless, which is beautiful. You don't need to go to CoreWeave, which just IPO'd on the NASDAQ and all that sort of stuff. You can literally just spin up a machine in seconds um, and, and they are 90% cheaper than uh, traditional cloud pr providers. And also you, um, you can pay with fiat and you can also pay with, revenue, um, with crypto, which I think is pretty cool. The link for all of this is in the, the description. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps.